Hi, my name is Theo, and you are listening to Between Two Trains. We bring you the best and brightest entrepreneurs in the North DeKalb area on the 1st and 15th of every month. Today, your co-hosts are Van Pappas and Eric Most. And now, Between Two Trains. Welcome to Between Two Trains. My name is Van Pappas, your friendly financial planner. And I'm Eric Most, your better business banker. And uh, we have, Eric, a, a great guest I'm really excited to have on. His name is Jake Otteson, and he is Jake from State Farm. Uh, those of you who've been around might remember the commercials. Uh, they're actually quite old, those commercials. They're, they're like almost 10 years old. And Jake, welcome to the show. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Am I right? Those commercials are about 10 years old? Yeah, so it's pretty timely, actually. We got an email um, just yesterday. The commercials are about 10 years old, and uh, there's a teaser out there that maybe State Farm's going to be bringing. They're going to bring it. They're going to bring Jake Jake back? Yeah. All right, so the real question is are you going to play Jake from State Farm? I'm lobbying. It's Uh, a work in progress. Here's one thing you got to do, man. You got to wear the khakis. You're not wearing the khakis. I know. I know. I don't look as good as him. Why don't we, for our listeners who may not remember that commercial, let's just play that commercial for them. Yeah, Merritt. It doesn't matter. You do that for me? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Oh, sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds... <laughs> so so that, that's the commercial from 10 years ago, Jake from State Farm wearing khakis. But we have the real life Jake from State Farm here. And you've got uh, a State Farm agency right here in Chambly, right? Correct. Yeah, just up in last September. Uh, so it's, it seems like there's State Farm agencies all over the place. I mean, how, how many are there? Do you yeah, know? It's kind of like uh, Starbucks just around the corner. It's a convenience. It's... Um, you know, every agent's different. They're running their own business. There's about 19,000 state farm agents across 19, the country. 19,000? Yeah. Wow. Holy cow. So how do you dif- differentiate yourself from the other state farm agents? So like I said, everyone is run as their own business. Mm-hmm. Um, every single agent uh, is able to develop their own processes, have their own strategies for hiring their team, and just sort of creating their own culture within their office. So... When you come to my office, you're going to get a completely different experience than a different State Farm agency down the road. Hopefully, it's going to be, generally, it's going to be all positive. But, um, again, you're really doing business with that name on the door and their team um, that's there to help you out. Nice, nice. Now, your agency is located at 3700 Longview Drive, which, for those who don't know, is right at the edge of the Huntley Hills neighborhood. Why did you decide to go there? What was special about that place? Yeah, so it's um, everything kind of came full circle in my life. And what I mean by that is when I graduated college, the first place I lived was actually on Longview Drive. Okay. My, uh, college buddies and I rented a home on Longview Drive um, for several years. So uh, fast forward a little bit, got married, moved out, um, and come full circle about a year ago when I was in the business planning process and looking for a place to have my office, I noticed that there was an office on Longview Drive, and it was a no-brainer from there. I was like, this is it. So it was a sealed deal from there. Did you grow up in Atlanta? Yeah, so I grew up in Atlanta. I grew up in Gwinnett County, which is about 30, 40 minutes north yep. of here. But um, yeah, it's kind of like my second home. I feel like I've lived here. It's kind of where I started after college and being on my own. Right. And college, where'd you, where'd you go to school? Uh, Milledgeville, Georgia. Yeah. Um, Georgia College. Go Bobcats. Ever heard of them? Oh, uh, yeah. No, I haven't heard of Bobcats. I've heard of <laughs> Milledgeville College. That's, uh, yeah. Yep. It's about two hours from Atlanta, so it's not too far, but it's um, it's down there. Yeah. So a Georgia native, uh, returning kind of close to home. How, you know, State Farm recently made a huge investment, you know, in Dunwoody, Sandy Springs area. Does that benefit, benefit the local agents? At all? I mean, is That's there... a great question. I mean, being, if, I, if I lived in Missouri as a State Farm agent, is it going to be tougher for me? Or I wouldn't say it's going to be tougher, but I think with those developments and that, I mean, they're right on 285. There's how many cars drive through 285 and see those buildings every day. I think it brings a branding and awareness. It does seem I, like every building along 285 and the 
perimeter mall area has a State Farm sign on it. Yes. So how many? How many? They're in like multiple <laughs> buildings, right? So a little backstory on that, and that's where I was at before I became an agent. I was on the corporate side, and I was in one of those buildings, and they're in the process of turning Atlanta into one of their hubs. And those are those new buildings you see that they're putting up. I believe they've got two of three done. Yeah. They're eventually going to house about 10,000 employees. The ones right on the MARTA. Right, yes. Yes, right on the MARTA. There's, I don't know how many they've got now because they're in a lease buyback program where they're slowly consolidating into the new buildings. But yeah, it was about eight at one point. Um, and it's their strategy to bring their employees into more uh, a hub-centric environment versus having everyone scattered out throughout the country. And it just helps on the operation side run a little more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, but kind of what, back here. What did you do for corporate when you were there? So I worked on the claim side when I started just out of college. And then I also worked in underwriting, which is kind of how I um, connected with agents and learned about the agency opportunity. That's interesting because, you know, State Farm is kind of known for being one of the best when it comes to claims and paying out. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you can go cheaper insurance, but it might take you forever to get a claim. When you were in claims, was that sort of uh, something that corporate, was there some sort of philosophy or mandate that said, hey, you know, we got to pay out here if, yeah. if there's, a, I mean, let's not hold these people up? Mm -hmm. So State Farm is different in that sense that they're going to pay what they owe and they're going to do it quickly and efficiently, uh, you know, and make that person whole again after an accident. Um, State Farm's a mutual company, and what that means is they're owned by their policyholders. Um, they're not a public company. They don't have a bottom line from the sense of um, investors and stakeholders looking at those numbers from that regard. And that's kind of what sets State Farm apart. Um, but that, I definitely noticed that on the claim side from helping our customers, but also, um, you know, interacting with other companies and the interactions we had back and forth with them. Where do you see, you know, kind of the future for insurance as kind of more millennials, you know, become, uh, you know, They're getting out of their cars, it seems like more and more millennials who want like transit oriented living and uh, e-scooters, bikes. E -scooters. I mean, the do y'all do y'all have some kind of insurance policy for e-scooters? E -scooters? No, not that I'm aware of. No, but you're, you're it's asking, called, you might need to run that up. It's called, yeah. it's called term life insurance. Term life yeah. insurance. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> no, it's, um, I mean, yeah, State Farm's got a variety of ways we help people. But that's definitely something that is on. I know State Farm's radar and any major or any insurance company's so radar. That cars, obviously, homes, what else? Cars, homes, um, people that rent boats, really anything, you name it. Okay. And uh, there's usually something there to help protect. Um, with that being said, like I said, the um, I guess the vision of the future is a little muddy. I think it's interesting. Um, that's something I considered when I was in the business planning process of opening up my own agency was what is the future of, you know, mainly auto insurance because that's what people know State Farm for. Obviously, there's sure. other things we provide, but when people think of State Farm, they think of their home and their car. Mm -hmm. And um, I yeah. think it's interesting the cars driving themselves is, it's really interesting from the standpoint of how it helps people um, maybe live more efficiently. Um, but also safer maybe they yeah more fewer fewer accidents absolutely I can go out and have a couple of cocktails <laughs> and not have to worry about getting a DUI right absolutely I know that's crossing people's minds yeah, yeah. and so my my 83 year old mother I don't have to worry about we really don't want her on the street stuff her anymore. in the car and hit go and that's right it takes off take her to church <laughs> car take her to church there you go yeah it's yeah it's interesting so you think that that will change the auto insurance I mean won't we still need to insure the vehicle in some yeah, way yeah there's going to be so based on what i've seen and this is just my educated guess is there's still obviously going to need to be coverage for things like um, catastrophes weather theft um, I, I mean imagine having your computer or not your computer your car run by a computer if, you know someone could hack into that there's a whole yeah. slew of things from liability to damage that could happen right. um, it breaks but i also know. wonder you know Americans love being in control for the most part. We do, just as human beings, I wouldn't even say it's an American thing that, you know, are people going to be willing to give up control of no, being able to get love our and cars. drive somewhere? We love our cars, yeah. especially here in Atlanta. Yeah, you exactly. Know, if you were in another big metropolis that has good mass transit, but we don't have any good mass transit, and we love our cars. Yes, I know. And I know there's some stuff going on locally with Shamley to 
help it become more walkable and, you know, with transit options. That, but at, it, as a whole, in Atlanta, you're absolutely right. We're yeah. terrible with traffic and cars. And, so back back to kind of the business plan. I'm, I'm interested. I think it's very unique that you didn't – you were in the business, so to speak, just on a different side, the corporate side, and you worked on the business plan for how long before? Uh, it was about a, about a year um, were you doing that was, quietly or was this announced? Like, did people know you were working with, I mean, how did you kind of, you, you learned through the claims and your experience, you talked to the agent side and, and had interest there. And then when you made the decision, yeah, I want to move forward. I mean, did you announce it or was this something you were doing kind of on the side, so to speak? Uh, it was definitely on the side in addition to my roles at the state farm corporate side. What a lot of people don't know, um, and I get asked about it is, you know, is your franchise open or is your branch open? They think that it's an extension of State Farm and we're employees of State Farm, which is not the case at all. We, as, as I mentioned, run our own businesses, plan for our own businesses, and that's what I had to do um, in addition to the corporate responsibilities. Obviously, I didn't do it in the dark. I let you know the people that I was with know what was going on. Your, your boss. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How, how do they, I mean, are they encouraging with employees doing stuff like that or... Yeah. They say, oh, great, now i got to find a replacement for Jake. <laughs> no, I mean, State Farm's really good about that on the employee side as far as encouraging growth and, you know, finding the career that's right for you, whether it's with State Farm or elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, the majority of agents actually come from, um, you know, maybe they're other business owners or maybe they're business-minded. Um, a lot of them come from a team member background within an agent's office so that they've been able to learn the agency business from the ground up which is completely different from the corporate side. Mm -hmm. Um, The overlap for me was having that product knowledge and knowing sort of the front end, the back end of underwriting when we're, you know, bringing in new business, but also on the back end of what happens, you know, when this tangible or intangible product, this policy that you're just paying a bill for every month, you know, is needed because you've had a claim or an accident. So you didn't get a book of business when you started? It was from ground up? You started from scratch? No, I did not start from scratch. So there was actually an agent that retired, and um, those clients obviously had a need to be taken care of. So so there was an opportunity there. Now, how does that work at State Farm? The, the, The retiring agent can sell that to you, or does he just walk away with nothing? So like what's the back end for you? Yeah, I know you're just starting, but yeah. So if you build this book of business, and 20 years from now you say, "Hey, I'm ready to walk away." Yeah. So a lot of agents don't walk away. Um, one because either they love the job, or two because they're they're in it. Yeah. And they generally the good agents have a good team to support them as well. Um, with that being said, yeah, going into it with an existing book was an opportunity for me. But yeah, on the back end when you walk away. Those clients are still clients of State Farm. Yeah, the agent doesn't get paid. So, for example, as an f- independent financial planner, if I decide to retire, I've got my book of business of my financial plan clients. I can put that up for sale, and some other financial planner would pay me some multiple of my revenue stream for that. Yeah, this guy didn't get anything when he walked away. So I don't want to say he didn't get anything. There's other incentives um, in pay in addition to just the normal revenue that you would receive. Okay. Um, so there's definitely incentives there for the retiring agent. Um, with that being said, the um, so the way State Farm's agency is set up is we're exclusive agents. We exclusively exclusively represent the State Farm brand and the State Farm products, mm-hmm. um, which is why. It's all tied back into State Farm from that regard. Um, whereas an independent agent might have their own shop, and they may have access to various carriers, but they don't. Um, they don't. They might not have the branding or that financial strength <clears throat> of the carriers they represent. Okay. Yeah. Now, with so many agencies, you said what nineteen thousand? Is there like? Uh, territory battles like are we the you know are we having turf wars here of okay this is my area this is your area <laughs> no absolutely you can go anywhere right you you could take a client anywhere in the state right what do you mean by that like if someone from savannah georgia called you up and said i need some state farm insurance you wouldn't say, hey, well, I, I don't cover State Farm. Here's your guy down. You don't cover Savannah. I mean, you don't cover Savannah. Yeah. Yeah. So you could still take them as a client, couldn't you? Absolutely. Okay. You know, we're licensed across the state of Georgia. Um, 
We have got a question. we have listeners worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Between Two you're Trains not, podcast. No, we're not joking, actually. No, we've got at, one in Alaska. They, so. When I look at the analytics, there is someone in Alaska that listens to our show. I have no idea who it is, but they listen to our show in Alaska. Yeah, that's interesting. Ah, I know. I'll tell you what. So you know, <laughs> you so you're probably not you're probably not licensed in Alaska, but you yeah. know, you might get a call. From yeah, some guy in Alaska. Hey, can you can you write me <laughs> some auto insurance? But back to the question. I mean, st- I mean, there's competition, and it's probably healthy. But how do you approach that if you've got a client in Macon or something? Yeah, absolutely. So a- the agency force of State Farm is unique in that sense that we are helping each other. Uh, before I even opened my agency, I talked to several agents, and they all were willing to help answer questions, tell me about a day in the life. Um, and I asked so many different ones, going back to what I originally said, is they're all running their businesses differently. There's no you know, one-size-fits-all, which is the beauty of it. Um, but we're licensed to help everyone, everywhere within the state of Georgia. Um, as far as helping someone and having that distance gap, um, we've got technology nowadays where I can share my screen, I can, you know talk through, communicate. I can send them electronic documentation yeah, you do uh, 99% e- you of do the time. You do e-signatures. You do exactly. some kind of docu-sign and boom, yep. you don't need to actually be in front of them. Absolutely. We've found that more more uh, common than not recently. Yeah. So getting back to the original question, let's say, is there any kind of, you help each other, great, but you know, is there like an area you say, okay, this is sort of my... Huntley Hill, Sexton Woods, <laughs> Chambly is my turf because I my location is here in, in that area. Whereas there's probably like, what's the next closest, not to give uh, credit to one of your other state no, areas, like fine. what's the next closest? It's got to be one, probably like a mile or there's two. There's two actually within just a few miles. A few yeah, miles. Or even a mile, yeah. And so y'all, y'all know each other yes. and no one's saying, hey, you know, I'm... Um, Sometimes I get those flyers in the mail, you know, you'll send out those <laughs> flyers and I'll get like three of the same flyers that the return address is all a different agency. Yes. So how do y'all, so y'all don't care that y'all might be no. sending something out to someone else's area? No. So it's within a zip code or within an area. Um, but I mean, there's no, um, from what I've experienced from talking to other agents, any hostility or going after, there's no like... Uh, this is my territory, stay away. I, I believe there's enough cake to go around for everyone. We've got how many people living in, in the Atlanta area and across Georgia. It's definitely and, a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. Um, what if what if I was a State Farm client with another agent, but I wanted you to be my agent? I'm listening to Between Two Trains podcast. And go, yeah, I'm already <laughs> with State Farm, but I really like the sound of that Jake guy. I want to go to him. Can they change? So that that's a great question. Um, and we know agents. We run into it every day. Um, what I always recommend is that person that's with State Farm have a conversation with their agent. Um, at the end of the day, it's about the customer, making sure the customer's happy and um, what the customer wants. The customer or the agent down the road is going to have access to the same files the same, um, you know, platforms being able to help in the same ways, but um, and even we, I've had questions, of people saying, "Hey, can I come to you and can you help me out with my rating?" And it doesn't work that way. It's a common misconception. Um, but the insurance industry as a whole is regulated at a state level, where you know, as far as like rate filings and how we, you know, the quoting and what we provide, it's pretty consistent across the board, no matter what agent you go to. Mm-hmm. Um, so to sort of answer that question, it, the general protocol or I guess unspoken word is, you know, if someone comes to me and they've got a different State Farm agent, I'm going to ask them if they've talked with their current agent and what, you know, what conversations they've had and what's going on and let them know that, hey, that agent is capable of helping you out. Um, one, well, that I, agent can't hold it up if the client really wants to know. Oh, absolutely. That agent has to say, okay, you yeah, that'd be a conversation between the agent and the client. Um, but I, I'll always ask them those questions. And I'll also, going back to just the relationship between the agents is, is great. I'll, I'll reach out. I talked to one the other day. I, we talk to each other when you know things like this come up. We work together um, to make the customer happy at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, we're actually button up against our time for our little break. Uh, when we come back after the break, we're going to play our ever fun can you ace it game got some good questions today you got too. some good questions for jake people need to stay tuned jake if you haven't heard it i think you have you've listened to the podcast we'll ask you three questions we'll give you answers to select 
If you get two of the three questions, then you'll get a fabulous gift card provided by Brian Fisk from the Chambly Ace Hardware. Uh, if you need stuff from Ace Hardware, I highly recommend heading over to Chambly Plaza. In fact, Eric, my son was recently in a national history project contest and needed to make a phonograph and he needed some parts so we walked down to the Chambly Ace Hardware and Brian walked us around the store finding cranks and parts and screws for his school project. So it's not just about fixing up your home at Ace Hardware, it's about helping your kid get first place in a history contest. Was Ace the place where you found the helpful hardware yes. folk? Yes, yes. Brian is definitely helpful in hardware. <laughs> so we'll be back right after uh, these words from our sponsors. If you recently got divorced, you may be wondering how to pick up all of the financial pieces. Is it time to make a new budget, new goals, and get a new game plan with your investments? What about the best way to save money on your taxes? Take control of your money future. Go to OxygenFinancial.net to schedule a complimentary meeting today. Go to OxygenFinancial.net to get started right now. Securities offered through Kestra Investment Services, member FINRA, SIPC. Advisory services offered through Kestra Advisory Services, an affiliate of Kestra Investment Services. Oxygen is not affiliated with Kestra. Welcome back to Between Two Trains. We come to you on the 1st and the 15th of every month. Those of you listening, we need your help. We've had such a great turnout from listeners over the last couple of years, but we need you to spread the word. If you like this show, please tell a friend, shoot them an email, send them a text and let them know to listen to Between Two Trains because we are going to constantly bring you great entrepreneurs. But now, Eric, we're at the time to play Can You Ace It? So what, what do you got for Jake from State Farm? We are about to enter the competitive arena of Can You Ace It? And just like State Farm Arena, you are insured to have a good time, Jake. Oh, I love, I love it. <laughs> Speaking awesome. about... The Hawks. And Chase Bank is now the official banking partner of the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Right. Can you and so give us tickets? We're tied together. Between Jake and I, we might be able to swing, swing, yeah. swing some tickets. One of two, y'all can get me some tickets. Yeah, so. yeah you right. know, we can do a little, we can talk off air about all that. Right. But, all right, so you know the deal. Three questions, multiple guests, and you got to guess right to get the gift card. All right, so the first one, you know, we know you're an expert at State Farm. But what do you know about these famous Jakes? Ooh, famous Jakes. Famous Jakes, and I'm not jaking with you. Here we go. <laughs> Jake Lloyd is an American actor who was which of these characters? Anakin Skywalker from Star Wars. Jamie in Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Jingle All the Way. Or a recurring character from the TV series ER. What was the guy's name? Jake Lloyd. I've never heard of him. The second L is silent. Yeah, he's a famous J. Phone. (laughs) You got someone on standby. You got it. You got to pick one. Repeat the answers again. We've got Anakin Skywalker from Star Wars. We've got Jamie in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Jingle All the Way, and then the last one we've got a recurring character from the TV series ER. My wife's going to kill me if it's the Star Wars answer and I don't get it. Is she a big Star Wars? Big Star Wars. I think you got to go with that one. Mm, yeah, let's go with it. That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> so, uh, actually, all three of them were correct. All, all three of them are right, huh? Jake Lloyd played Anakin Skywalker. That's the little Skywalker. kid, right? That must be the little kid. And Anakin Skywalker was just a little kid in Star Wars, right? Anakin or became that, the it older guy, Star Wars, or yeah. is it the older guy? Look, uh, I don't know. We'll have to look him up. Look him up. You can find out. Your your wife probably knows. Yeah, I'll text her after this. (laughs) All right, question number two. All right, question number two. Jake from State Farm's real name. Ooh. What is it? Is it Justin Campbell? Is it Jake Gyllenhaal? Is it Gabe Gabriel? It's Jake Otteson. He's sitting right here. Yeah, we're going to have to scrap all those answers. All right, what what were you doing? So, Jake from State Farm's real name. Uh Is either A, Justin Campbell, B, Jake Gyllenhaal, or C, Gabe Gabriel? It's going to be A. That is correct. Love that sound. Love that sound. <laughs> Justin Campbell. Yeah. You know who the third guy is? His name's Jake. 
His name is Jake. He'll always be Jake. You know, State fun Farm. fact, he actually works for State Farm. He's actually he, up at the corporate head. That's he's a, a corporate employee? Yeah. That's internal he talent? Actually, yeah. And well, he did that before he did the commercials, or they hired him after the commercials? No, he did it. At, so he worked on the, the story is he worked on the corporate side, and um, he did it just as a gig with State Farm. And he actually, from my understanding, what I've been told, there's a lot of rumors out there, but he left um, thinking that maybe he could go acting, somewhere, kind of acting career. jump off of there from a platform. But I've, I've heard that he's actually back Back at State Full Farm. circle, and it's 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 timely. Since ten, ten years later. Yeah, exactly. Turns out the middle-aged male uh, the role. Th- I know who yeah. the third guy is. What was the third name no. on that? I know who that is. Gabe Gabriel. That's the guy in the other State Farm commercial that plays the agent with Aaron Rodgers. Yes. Oh. Right? The sports agent. The sports yes. agent. The sports from agent. State Farm commercial yes. with Aaron Rodgers. Do we just make a connection? Yeah. <laughs> right. No. No. No connection. <laughs> All right, all right. We've gotten two right, so you know you're you're golden. You're going to get deuce the gift card. But let's for you, Brian. let's deuce see for if deuce. we can get all three right. All right. The last question, but not the least. Jake the Snake is best known for a being the largest python in captivity at the San Diego Zoo. B having the NFL record for most sacks in a season, or C the inventor of the DDT wrestling move. Jake the Snake. What is he famous for? You might be too. No, no, we gotta, I know this. We got to go with option number two. He was a quarterback in the NFL. Was that the was that the option? What was the NFL? Well, well, no, NFL. not quarterback. Having NFL record for most sacks in a season. Uh, oh, so if you think that it's a quarterback, I thought you said sacks. So. Oh no, most sacks. Can you repeat those answers? Yeah. Being the largest <laughs> python in captivity at the San Diego Zoo, having the NFL record for most sacks in a season. Or C, the in, the inventor of the DDT wrestling move. Van said I might be too young. Hmm. Let's go with option one. I'm Lark. changing it up. Lark. Oh. oh, sorry. He was uh, Jake the Snake. He was a famous wrestler. The wrestler from like the seventies and eighties. Oh, That's why I figured he'd be too young because yeah. he was back in the like the eighties, and uh, he's the guy that invented. You know the DDT where they put. They put your head in front of you and they lift you up and slam you down on your yeah, head. Yeah, I thought that was Diamond Dallas Page. I didn't know his. This wow. is this is the guy that didn't learn something that. new every yeah. day. <laughs> All right, but regardless, you did get two of the three correct. So here is your fabulous gift card from uh, the Chambly Ace Hardware. So it sounds like you've been in there before. So go say hello to Brian and uh, send all your customers his way. I'd like to issue a PSA if I could at this time. Before you Google DDT and begin practicing those moves in your basement, see Jake from State Farm and get a term life insurance policy. You will need some some insurance before doing that. We don't recommend... It's just a PSA. It's just... Kids, don't do this at home. No, no. But if you... The good news is... But if you do... We don't have any. I can (laughs) trust you. I've seen the demographics on our analytics. We don't have any kids listening to our our podcast. No, we Weekend warrior wrestlers out there trying to... Su- surprisingly, actually, um, 30 to 45 female is what comes up as our number one demographic. So it must be the, the smooth tones of Eric's voice that attract the, <laughs> the 30 to 45-year-old females. There's nothing smooth about that. But if you know your husbands are significant others and they have wild hairs, to get, them, get them over to Jake. You should, <laughs> we'll take care of you. Need, you need coverage. Plug, I love it. All well, right, so Jake, um, tell, tell people if they do need coverage, you know, how do they reach out to you? You've got a phone number that you want them to call or what? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of different ways they can get in touch with us. Um, start with jakeodison.com. Phone number. Now, that's spelled O-T-T-O-S-O-N. Yeah, J-A-K-E-O-T-T-O-S-O-N. Odison. Yep. Okay. And then um, Facebook, you can even type us into Google. Google Maps. That's the way a lot of people find us through the phone number or through just directions to get into our office. Do you um, get people that just walk in? Um, I'd say a couple a week. Going back to kind of what we talked about, a lot of it's over the phone. Um, that number you can actually text and call, so we can text straight from our computer. It's just a pretty cool platform we've got access to. And then, you know, the social media outlets as well. Sweet. Yeah. All right. So, Eric, you got any parting words before we. We'll work on those Hawks tickets. Yeah. Maybe but a sweet as well. That would be sweet. <laughs> That'd be a sweet, sweet. That would be nice. 
Thanks, Jake. Jake, Jake, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it, and good luck. Uh, hopefully, you'll build this huge, uh, you know, book of business. And outside of that, thanks everyone for listening, and we'll be back in two weeks for another great episode of Between Two Trains. Thank you.